get back It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, now Laura Roeder, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, we have Laura Roeder. She's founder of MeetEdgar.com, which is a social media automation tool designed to prevent updates from going to waste. Basically, you don't have to keep feeding in post after post because it recycles them for you, saves you tons of time. Since Edgar's launch, they've grown to 16 employees and have more than $2.8 million in annual recurring revenue, and they've bootstrapped the entire way. Congratulations, Laura. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. So, Laura, since it's Inspired Insider, I always ask one of the lowest points Mm -hmm. and then how you push through it. I mean, you know, we've talked about B-School. I mean, deciding to leave B-School was an incredibly difficult decision because it was very much a gut decision. It was like, especially looking back now, there was like nothing rational about that decision because it was doing really well. Um, And I really liked working with Marie. Like, it was fun. Like, at the time I lived in LA and she lived in New York and we were always like flying back and forth. And like, it was just just fun. We had built this great community of people who loved the product. Yeah. But I just had this gut feeling like this is not my Mm. passion. You know, like this is Marie's passion. Like this is fun to work on, but I kind of saw like this is going to keep taking off and I cannot do this casually. Like I got to be all in on this. And I just didn't feel in my gut um, like I really was. And I'm like, I was terrified to tell her. I was like, Mm. it took me a long time to work up the nerve to tell her because- Because of course I, you know, she was going to be disappointed because we had built this together and I was bailing on her. You felt like you were letting her down. Right. I was saying, I don't want to do this anymore. We had never really like, we just assumed we were going to keep working on it together, Yeah. you know? So I really didn't want to disappoint her or make, I was afraid, you know, she would feel like she couldn't do it without me, which is laughable now because she did much better (laughs) without me. We'll never know. (laughs) Um, but but yeah, that was a really hard thing just to feel like I was letting down a yeah. good a good friend. Yeah. So know? how'd that conversation go? It went pretty well because she because we were good friends, I mean she didn't want me to do anything that I wasn't all in. And and I mean we have the same philosophy about business that way. Like I never want I never want anyone to work for me that's not super excited to be there every day. Yeah. Like I don't like when companies have like stock options that vest because I'm like, I don't want someone waiting around for five right. years to get the payout. Like I want them to be in today. If they don't right. like it anymore, they should leave. So, yeah. you know, she feels the same. Like she didn't want to work with someone who didn't, who wasn't a hundred percent excited about it. Yeah. So how do you navigate that parting ways? Cause I, this happens all the time, right? Mm-hmm. Two people start it. One, one person keeps going with it as a vision. The other person doesn't. And there's also like, well, we started this together. Do we, do I get a portion going forward or do I not? How do you navigate that or recommend people? Well, I recommend you do that before you start, which right. we did not. We did not have. That's probably pretty have, common. Yeah. Right, right. We like we had an agreement that it was 50-50, but we did not have any sort of agreement as to what would happen if one of us so wanted leave. to leave. Right. Um, so, yeah, she ended up buying me out, um, but it was very much a challenge to figure out. We just had to figure out, you know, pretty randomly it's what tough. felt fair to both of us. Um, so, yeah, that was, that was tough. And it's t- even tougher sometimes when it's successful. You know, mm-hmm. if, it's, if it's, I don't know, it's not making much money, it doesn't matter, you could have it. And then, but when it's doing well, you have to figure that out. Right, right. And it, and also, yeah, it was doing well and it was new. So it's like, well, how much is it worth so far? How much will it be worth? You know, yeah, also like she perfect. had to redo because the whole branding was us together. You know, she used the same content, but she did have to redo all the marketing and all the content for the course. So it's like, she's obviously still going to have she a lot just of put work. a big X over your face and all <laughs> right. the, the marketing. No. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it wasn't just as simple as, okay, we invented this product together and now you can just keep churning it out at the factory, you know? So, so yeah, all those things considered, we were able to come to an agreement that that we were both happy with. Yeah. No, I'm sure. Yeah. That's really common. So I wanted to ask you on that. What about the proudest moment on the flip side? (sighs) 
the proudest moments for me, like, so my, my team is all remote. So everyone works mm. from their own home. Nice. Um, and we meet up together twice a year. So we just had the most recent one um, here in Austin in February. And so, of course, everyone that we have is the biggest one we've ever had. Yeah, what do you <laughs> so do? You do? We're growing the business. Um, we, like, we take a week. We usually kind of like work in the morning and hang out in the afternoon and do fun stuff. Um, so, yeah, so this one, this one maybe like 12 or 13 people came. Um, and that's the part that makes me feel incredibly proud and incredibly mm-hmm. fulfilled more than like when we're together and I'm looking around and I'm like, these people have a job that they love because of something that I helped to create yeah. that like, that's what I'm in this for. That's rewarding. That feels yeah. Incredible. yeah. So what are some other things Laura, that you do to keep that culture, even though they're remote? Mm-hmm. Um, some other things that we do, I mean, we are, you know, goofing off on Slack all the time, like most remote companies. We do a lot of video chats. Like every morning we do a company-wide oh, really? video chat. That's cool. Um, just to see, like, it just helps you connect. Like, I am working with other humans. You're like, you I know? am working. No. I'm just- <laughs> <laughs> right. right. And we always go to video chat when there's something, like, a little more in-depth that we need to discuss, you know. Video chat's very, very important. And we do just, like, fun things, like, we did a secret Santa last year that was super fun. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we always are trying out different things because there's not a lot established for a remote company. So like we have watched movies. There's like this tool where you can all watch a movie oh, really? together from your own computers. <laughs> so like we do that and we like chat about the movie um, or just like send people things in the mail. And then we all have like a thing if I have any, like we all have our little Edgar coffee cups and you see people with them and it kind of feels like you're all working in the same place. It's just like little things <laughs> The like video that. makes a big difference. Yeah. 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 What other tools you use? So you use Slack for the remote teams, you use Slack, mm-hmm. you use a video chat. What else? Mm, um, our development team uses Trello yeah. and the rest of our team uses Asana for task management. Mm-hmm. Um, we use Help Scout for our customer service. Mm-hmm. We use Stripe for payment processing. Yeah. Um, mentors. I know you're always learning. You're always reading, listening to business books and, mm-hmm. and talk to a lot of people. You're creating fame. Mm-hmm. You've helped a lot of people. Who are some of your mentors? And I know you mentioned Marie and mm-hmm. besides her and, and some of their best advice. I mean, my mentors are my friends like i love hanging out with entrepreneurs um here in austin noah kagan is a good friend of mine so you know he's a really smart marketer he's also a really great connector um he regularly like invites me to lunches with other interesting people here in austin um i just i mean i have so many it's like austin is like a hotbed of entrepreneurs yeah yeah it is who else yeah who else is interesting that people should check out company wise or, or person wise um, another like friend and mentor is um, Ian Schoen. He hosts the Tropical MBA mm-hmm. um, in their company. They had an e-commerce company they sold. Now they have a, a like forum called Dynamite Circle. Um, another really smart entrepreneur. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just there's tons of people. Like I just love talking to my friends about what they're what they're up to right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Thank you so much, Laura. This has been awesome. And I love hearing the behind the scenes on Meet Egder. Um, I have one last question, but before I ask it, just tell people where should they go. I know they should go to meetegger.com. They should go to meetegger.com backslash Edgar dash on dash air. And we'll link that up in the notes. Also, where else should they, they check out social media or what you have, what you're up to? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at LKR. So that's another good LKR. Place to go. Okay, great. So what have we not covered that about Meet Edgar that we should talk about? Um, I mean, we haven't touched on the time saving, which is, which is one of the hugest benefits that people have. Actually, one of the funniest emails that we get is, uh, I feel really guilty, guilty telling you this, but I fired someone from my company. Nice work. <laughs> <laughs> after I brought on Edgar. Um, and also the fact that it's, you know, we always call Edgar he and we use a person's name. A lot of the reviews people will write, like, I brought a new guy into my company. His name's Edgar. That's He's funny. taking care of social media for me. But I love reading that because that was really the intent that yeah. all the things you've been doing manually, you can now just have software do for you yeah. um so i mean the time saving is is really massive because yeah. it really is you load it up and of course you keep tweaking and you keep adding things but i mean our time on social media i've just seen in our own company has just dropped dramatically and actually 
uh, Tom is the guy who runs social at our company. And he was telling me, he's like, he's like, I kind of feel like I don't spend enough time like coming up with social content. I'm like, that's because you already came from right. like, Edgar is so full. You already came up with so much. She's like, shouldn't I be adding new stuff every right. week? I'm like, not if you don't need to. I'm like, are our results still great? He's like, yeah. I'm like, Edgar is too easy. He's like, I want to keep my job. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the tagline. Only $50. You can fire an employee. <laughs> right. What's your favorite success story from Edgar that you've gotten? Oh, man. I mean, like we have – we need to have more on our blog because we've actually done a few customer interviews and we haven't actually published mm -hmm. them yet. I mean, there's yeah. one on our blog that you can read um, from Wine, Wine Tracker, which is actually like a wine app where you track the wine that you like. And mm -hmm. they've used Edgar largely for Twitter – um, they got to like 20,000 followers in six months, wow. all organic. Um, and they're an interesting case study because one of the biggest objections that we hear is like, can I really repeat content and how much can I repeat content? Right, right. Um, and it's fascinating looking at their stats. I mean, really it's the same for all of our, all of our customers. What's always interesting to me is you look at the same status update and they will post things like two and a half, three weeks later, which a lot of people would consider pretty frequent. Yeah. You look at their status updates, it's actually sometimes uncanny. It'll get the exact same amount of retweets three that weeks later amazing. without fail. That's it's amazing. It's like 12 times, 13 times, 12 times. You just see every time they post it, it gets the same yeah. engagement, yeah. which people think that it'll drop off, but it's largely a new audience every time. So it kind right. of makes sense. It's going to get the same results. Right. right. Yeah. And people don't think, they think, oh, I'm just going to piss people off. And I had right. someone do a social experiment where they put their, their birthday like every, not even two weeks, but like every day, they go, oh, it's my birthday. And they did it every day to see when people actually noticed that they just <laughs> reposted it every day. And I think, it, I forgot what they said. It took like 10 days for people to actually get pissed off. Like, stop saying it's your birthday. That's but really it took funny. that long. So, yeah, people, yeah. yes, Meet Edgar, huge time <laughs> saver. Go to meetedgar.com. Laura, this is awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire, came out better on the other